All right, um, in this video, I want to talk more about recursion and how, how to kind of reason through recursive code. And so for this, we're going to be looking at an example, which is the Fibonacci sequence. And, and basically we want to write a function that will tell us for a given place in the sequence, um, what number we should have. And, and so what is the Fibonacci sequence? Well, the Fibonacci sequence starts with, always starts with zero and one. And then after that, there's a pattern um, the each each new number after these two is the sum of the previous two. So zero plus one is one. One plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus three is five. Three plus five is eight. And, and we could keep going. And, and these numbers are at what position? This these numbers are at position zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And, and so as I look at these, um, I can see that for most of these numbers, except the first two, there's the recursive pattern. And, and that pattern is really that the Fibonacci number of n, and, and by n I mean the position, right? So n is the position. The Fibonacci number of n is equal to the Fibonacci number of n minus one, the previous number, plus the Fibonacci of n minus two, two numbers ago. And so that's for most of the numbers, and except for the beginning, right? I guess the, the number at position zero is zero, the number at position one is one, and really I guess I could just write that out, the you know, Fibonacci of n equals n. And so the code up here uh, captures that, right? If n is less than two, then the Fibonacci of n just returns n. Otherwise, if that's not true, we come down here and we return the sum of the two previous numbers. Okay, so how could we trace through this? Um, and in particular, if I want to figure out what the Fibonacci of four is. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to write over here, Fibonacci of four equals what? Well, n is 4, and that's not less than 2, so I'm going to kind of come down to this other case. That's going to be Fibonacci of 3 plus Fibonacci of 2. And that equals something, right? I, I don't know what that is yet. I need to kind of solve some other problems. So I leave this problem hanging until I go and solve those others two, and then I'll come back. So I have these two new problems, Fibonacci of 3 equals something, and Fibonacci of two equals something. I have to solve both of those problems. So I'll start with Fibonacci of three. And so kind of coming through the code here, I haven't hit my base case yet. So Fibonacci of three is going to be Fibonacci of three minus one and Fibonacci of three minus two. So, so I'll just write that out. So here I have Fibonacci of two plus Fibonacci of one equals something. And so I guess that that's depending on another problem, which I already have on the board, which is Fibonacci of two. I still have to figure out that, what that is. That's trying to kind of help me solve two problems. And I've also introduced this new problem. What is Fibonacci of one? So I'm gonna write down here. Uh, I need to keep track of all the things I have to try to solve to uh, get an answer here. Okay, Fibonacci of two. Um, I haven't hit my base case yet. So, here I'm going to get Fibonacci of position 1 plus Fibonacci of position 0 equals something. And I already have Fibonacci 1 on, on kind of the board, uh, but I need to add Fibonacci of 0. Right? So I'm going to add Fibonacci of 0 equals something. And it turns out these last two problems I have are, are both my base case, right? Both of these numbers are, are less than two. So, so I kind of know what the answer is for those. So, so I'm gonna write the answer in red. So Fibonacci of one is one, Fibonacci of zero is zero. Um, so that's all well. And now that I've kind of solved the base case, I can, I can work my way back, back to what I originally care about, which is Fibonacci of four. So, so how will I do that? Well, Fibonacci of you know, I can just kind of start crossing off. Fibonacci of one is going to be one. 
Fibonacci of zero is maybe zero. So I guess Fibonacci of two is one plus zero. Okay, well, so that tells me what Fibonacci of two is for the previous prime. So I have one here, and then Fibonacci of one, I know that's one. So I guess the Fibonacci of three is going to be two. Okay, working my way back. I know what Fibonacci of three is now. That's just two. And Fibonacci of two, I've shown as one. And so I've worked my way back. The answer is that the Fibonacci of four is three. And that actually matches what I, I had kind of written down here um, in the notes. All right, so this is an example of one of those problems where the function doesn't do anything. Uh, by doing something, I mean having some sort of output, like it's printing, or maybe kind of changing data structures, maybe it's appending to a list. This doesn't do any of that. It's just kind of very mathematical. It's just returning uh, returning uh, an answer, right? So, so kind of Python code that is basically equivalent to uh, kind of mathematical functions, uh, this is the picture that we'll, we'll do to kind of solve these. Right, but not, not every, not every um, kind of recursive function we're going to encounter is like that. So let me go to this next uh, um, one here and, and try to solve one where we're doing something more complicated. In this case, we're actually appending um, to a list, right? So it's a recursive function, right? I mean, I have h is here, and then, uh, and then kind of h calls itself. And so for this one, where we're kind of having these actions in the world, in order to figure out what happens, uh, we really need to kind of figure out the order in which events happen, right? I mean, if I if I can figure out, you know, what appends I do to B and the order of those, then I can answer the question, well, what is B at the end? And so for these kinds of problems, I need to figure out an order of events. Um, I'm going to be drawing what we call a call graph, right? So, so how will I do that? So what I'll do first is I will, I will draw my first function call, which is H h of 2, 5, 6, 3. Okay, so that's what I'm calling. And then I'm going to look at what the code does, right? So what is the length of a? So a is this list, right? So this, this list is getting past a. Um, yeah, of course the list has length greater than 0. So I'm going to call two functions, right? I'm going to call h and then I'm gonna do my append. And, and so when I'm calling h this next time, um, I'm, I'm calling it on a subset of this list. I guess I'm slicing it from position one on, right? So I'm kind of grabbing these last three um, items, right? So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say from here, I am going to call h of, of what? Of five, six, three. That's what I'm calling. And then the other thing I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to append a0 to b. Uh, a0 was 2, right? So I'm going to, down here, I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm just, instead of saying, I'm just trying to short, short, uh, shorten a bit, I'm just trying to say that I'm appending, I'm appending 3. Okay. So that's what happens when I call h on the whole list. What happens when I call h on this smaller list? Uh, so now this is a, right? For this call, when I call h of this, this is my a, and the length is greater than zero. And I see the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call myself again. I'm gonna call h of you know, a slice, right? And that slice is starting at position one. So it's just gonna be six and three, right? So I'm gonna call here, what am I gonna call? I'm gonna call h of, six and three. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to append, right? I'm going to append my, the value of uh, a at position zero, which for me is five, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to append I'm going to append five. Okay. Well, I have another h to deal with now. I'm going to do this one, uh, 6 and 3. And, um, and so in this case, what am I going to do? I am going to, you know, first, my list is still greater than 0, so I'm going to do 1. I'm going to call h 
with kind of the last part of that list, which is just three. I'm going to append, on, or I'm going to call h with the list containing just three. And, and then I'm going to take that value at position zero and append that, right? So I'm going to say append, append sex. Okay. So now for my h call, what am I going to do? Um, for this one, I guess the length of, of a is um, one, so I'm still going to do this kind of one more time. Uh, but now if I slice this list, right, if I slice from position one on, I'm going to get an empty list, right? So I'm going to call it one last time, which is going to be h with the empty list. And then I'm going to do my append. I'm going to append the value in my a at position zero, which is just three, right? So then I'm going to append, append my value, which is is just three, okay? And so now I just have to think through this last case. When when I call h on the empty list, uh, you know, the length of a is, is zero. So, so none of this happens. And, and I guess this doesn't really do anything. Okay, so back to the question, right? What is nb? And I've figured out, well, all the things that I'm appending to it. And, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a timeline. A timeline of everything that happens. And, and well, what goes on that timeline? I guess there's all of these appends, right? I kind of have my three goes to the end, then six goes to the end, then five goes to the end, and then three goes to the end. So I'm really gonna end up with a list that looks like this. And we have B, equals the list with three, six, five, and three, uh, which is, is wrong. Um, and, and the reason why it's wrong is, is I can try to see where I made a mistake now. Way back at the beginning, right, when I called a, uh, uh, H on the whole list, I was supposed to append the value um, at, at zero, which is two, right? So let, let me kind of just correct this here. Here I actually have two, and and that's what I may have down here as well. I actually have have two. So two six five three is my final answer. Two six five three. I'm sorry, I'm kind of messing up again. So let me let me be a little more careful here. This is the last thing I do, right? The last thing I do, right, according to my timeline, is that I append two. So so I kind of crossed off the wrong three. So here I actually have two. And so so my final list is three, six, five, two, which is the opposite of the up here, three, six, five, two. And so what this function actually does is it just reverse, it reverses it reverses the list and puts the result in B, right? So that's what I want to do. When I have functions that are doing something like appending, I want to get a timeline and then have a call graph like this to figure out the order in which things happen. And of course, be more careful than I did so we can kind of figure out what the final answer is.